I want, to, uh, I want to take the message this morning, the very beginning of the message, I want to teach a doctrinal truth, and then I will make some practical applications toward the end. So, so I, let, me, let me just speak first of all. If you're, if you're new to Bible study, you're new to Bible reading, and, or, or maybe you, you kind of look at the Bible as a very intimidating book, uh, and, and I know many people do. We talk about that a little bit on Wednesday night, and it can be. It's a very big book. Um, but there are some great places to start. One of the places that I often encourage people to start is, uh, is maybe take one of the, maybe like the Gospel of John. Uh, I always do, well, I recommend Genesis first, and then, and then the, just to kind of get that foundation, and then, and then maybe the Gospel of John. But there's, some, there's four books books in the New Testament, that uh, they're short books, they're filled with doctrine, they're, they're, uh, they're, they're easier reads, and, and they're just filled with lots of nuggets. Some of them, some of our most famous verses that people memorize come out of them. And the verse, those, those four books I'm talking about are Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians, and Colossians. I want to speak out of the book of Galatians this morning, but it's, there's a very uh, interesting play on words in this book. And please know this, again, if you're kind of new to the Bible reading, Bible study, the, uh, the, the books, the books that the Apostle Paul wrote, beginning with uh, uh, the book of uh, the book of uh, Romans, and uh, th- those were all letters that he wrote, usually to churches, sometimes to individuals like Timothy or Titus. Um, but they were they had a dual purpose. God had a dual purpose for inspiring them. God had a, a reason, a, a two two reasons. One was they met a need of the time. In other words, today, for instance, when as we read a, a little bit out of the book of the the uh, uh, the book of the of Galatians, it was a church at Galatia. Paul was writing to this church. He had gone there. He had started a church, and uh, and and after there were a, a number of believers, he trained a pastor to stay there with them, and then they would continue. They they in essence had a church and it was a it was a thriving growing church and they would bring in new believers and so forth Paul would then move on to a different place and and as uh, and as he would move on to a different place though he would keep track of the places where he had been places like Corinth, places like Ephesus, places like Philippi. And he would check in on them and he had people that would travel to wherever he was and let him know how the church was doing. So somewhere in Paul's travels, he received word that there were a few problems at the church at Galatia. That after he had left, and he had left them with a pastor who would teach them, uh, that, uh, that there were some people that came in as leaders. It's interesting that, that Mauricio was talking about leaders earlier. And, uh, and, and, and so they would, they would come in and they, they were teaching some things that were not correct. They were teaching some things that were, that were not right. And they were contrary to what he had already taught them about this, this, uh, this thing that we call Christianity. At that time, it was, the, it was a new movement of, uh, of, of the church and, and Jesus was, uh, that Jesus had started. So, so we come to this chat. So we come to this book then. And in chapter number one, and uh, we come and, and, he, and he begins to address this issue. So notice in Galatians chapter number one and verse number six, Paul writing back to them. This is the letter he wrote back to them to help them to get through this difficult time. He said, I marvel. That means he said, I'm surprised. I'm, I'm shocked that you are so soon removed from him that called you unto the grace of Christ unto another gospel. And then the next verse, he said, which is not another, but there be some that trouble you and would pervert the gospel of Christ. Now he went on to address this in the, 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 the following verses. He said, listen, he said, I want you to understand something. When I came to you, I came under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. I came to bring you a message. The church we started was, was built on the foundation of Jesus Christ. He said, if I ever come back to you and preach to you something different than the gospel that I gave to you, you I, he said, I should be accursed. He said, don't listen to me. He said, if somebody else comes to you and tells you a different gospel, you need to not pay any attention to them. Let them be accursed. And then he went on to say, even if an angel leaves heaven, even if an angel comes and gives you a different gospel, let him be accursed. Now, let me just say that right there is a condemnation of the concept of the Mormon uh, 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 religion. That is that because that is based on an angel that came and gave them a new gospel of Jesus Christ. It's not a new God. There is no new gospel of Jesus Christ. In fact, the Bible says there is no new word of knowledge. It's not. That's not how it works. God, the the can, the, the scriptures were closed when the uh, uh, when when God inspired them the first time. Now, so so he went on to talk about that. Now, here's here's the point though, and here's here's what I wanted to bring you to. There's an interesting play on words here. 
I don't know if you caught it. I, I highlight, I, I put it in italics because I wanted you to see. Let's go back to verse number six, please, and note that uh, he said, I marvel that you're so soon removed from him that called you into the grace of Christ unto, and look at the next two words, another gospel. But then the next verse begins this way, which is not another, which is not another. And, and this is one of those instances. And here I want to encourage you about Bible study. Bible study is different than Bible reading. You with me? Bible study is different than Bible reading. And, and Bible study is where we come across something like this. And, and something, like this, something like this, if we're really trying to pay attention, it ought to sort of jump out at us. Because he said, you know, another gospel, but then he says, which is not another. What does that mean? That almost seems to be a contradiction, doesn't it? It almost seems to not make any sense. And so we have to study and not just read. So let me help you with this. And I probably should have made a couple of slides to help out with this, but just try to follow what I'm, what I'm, what I'm saying here. So, so how do we make sense of this? We have to, first of all, remember, when you and I read our Bibles, we are reading a, an English translation of the Word of God that was inspired, that, that the Holy Spirit inspired people to write down, you know, thousands of years ago. And they wrote it down in a different language. In this case, the Greek language, particularly the Koine Greek language, which is kind of everyday man's in, uh, 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 Greek. So Peter, for instance, Peter was well versed in Hebrew, but Peter also knew how to speak Greek. You, you with me? The, these, these writers. So, so the original, when, when this was first written down, it was written in Greek. And Greek is a, obviously is a different language. It's a much more precise language than English is. So when we read this in English, we see the word another in both of these verses, but they're not the same Greek words. So let me tell you what those Greek words are. In verse 6, when he says, I'm, I'm so surprised that you have, you have decided to follow another gospel. That is actually the Greek word heteros. You'll recognize hetero as in, uh, as in uh, heterosexual kind of thing, it's, you know, something of a different kind. It, it, uh, so, so we have this word heteros. In verse 7, however, when he says, which is not another, it's a different Greek word, which is the Greek word alos. Now, what is the difference? What's the difference between heteros and alos? What's the difference between another gospel, he said in verse 6, and which is not another in verse 7. Here's what it is. In verse number 7 here, when we see this word, which is not another, that is the Greek word alos, which means another of the same kind. Of the same kind. In the previous verse, when he said in verse 6, he said, you've gone to another gospel. That is the word heteros, which means another of a different kind. Let me help. Let me, let me, let me illustrate this a little bit. Tell me something. What is... This. It's an, okay. This is not a trick question. <laughs> it's an apple. It's, it's, it's a fruit we call an apple, yes? It's, it's an apple. So this is an apple. May I ask you, what is this? It's also an apple, right? This is, this is, a, this is a, a fruit called an apple. This is also a fruit called an apple, but it's a little different, isn't it? has a little different, different color, has a little different texture, but we know you can still make an apple pie out of this, right? You can still make an apple cobbler out of this. Yes. Somebody ought to do that. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, this is the gift that I have for those of you who learned a new name. So you can take it home and, and make something. You can make a caramel apple out of both of these, right? right. So this is alas. This is another of the same kind. It's still an apple. And so when Paul said... This is not, and not another, when, but when he was talking in verse number six, what is this? That's an orange. That's a big orange, isn't it? That's a nice orange. But it's an orange. See, this is, a, this is another fruit, but it's of a different kind. You can't make an apple pie out of this, right? You can't make a caramel apple out of this. See, because, why? Because it's a completely different kind of fruit. And so what Paul was trying to explain here to the church at Galatia, he said, listen, there's nothing wrong with... with uh, okay, was he telling them that he's the only one that, had any, uh, that he had any uh, knowledge? No, he wasn't telling them that. He wasn't telling them that he's the only one that has... This, so when he talks about another gospel, he said, he said look, I'm, I'm not telling you that I'm the only one who knows anything. I'm not telling you that I'm the only one who has any right answers. He said, but you do need to know the difference. If this is the gospel, you need to know the difference between another gospel of the same kind and another gospel that's a completely different gospel. You follow me? 
So that is what he's trying to teach them. So let me, let me kind of build upon this then today and make some applications to our, our lives today. You see, it's kind, of like, it's kind of like what we call the Gospels. By the way, who can tell me what the word Gospel means? Good news. Good news. It means good news. That's what the word gospel means. Oftentimes we think of the gospel as if there's only one gospel. And be careful, we want to be careful about that. So, for example, we have how many, how many, how many books of the Bible are what we call usually the gospels? There's four of them, right? There's Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. What are they? They're the same story, just simply told different ways, are they not? See, this is Matthew and this is Mark. It's, it, it's, it, they're the same story, but they're told in different ways. They have a little different nuance. Maybe they have a different focus. You know, Matthew was written uh, much more tar- with a targeted audience, for example, of the Jews, whereas some of the others, it, it, was a, it was a little bit more understandable to people who were not Jews. A lot of the stories that Matthew talked about, and a lot of the times we misunderstand them because we don't know Jewish culture. And, and so, the, so they're the same story, but they're just told in different ways. They're told through a different perspective. And, and, and by the way, that's why God chose to tell. The, the, the story of Jesus is important enough to be told by four people, isn't it? <laughs> See, and they were, they were, they were, they were, they're the same story though. And that's how, that's how they ended up in our Bibles. That's how we got those stories in our Bibles because God wanted to tell that same story four different ways, different emphases, different, different perspectives, maybe different parts of the story are, are, uh, are emphasized. And so that's what's going on there. So what was Paul telling the church at Galatia? He wasn't, he wasn't, again, he wasn't saying, I have a monopoly on the gospel. What he was actually saying was, you understand, there's, there's a lot of gospel. There's a lot of good news. Let me, let me just, uh, in fact, you know, let me just share some, some very quickly. Let's just, let me just take you on a quick tour through Scripture about the, there is not just a gospel. There are many gospels. Very quickly, Matthew 24, verse 14 talks about the gospel of the kingdom. Matthew chapter 26. We're not going to read all the verses. Just, I just want to draw your attention to them. Matthew 26 and verse number 13. Notice Jesus said, wherever this gospel is preached. That implies that there is more than one, right? Are you with me? He said this gospel. What's he say? He's saying this good news. He said this good news. He's, there's a lot of good news out there. And, and Jesus was saying anytime this particular gospel, anytime this part of the, the, the wonderful story of good news is told, this woman's going to be remembered. Mark chapter 1 and verse number 1. Notice, he, this is how Mark began the, the book. He said, the beginning of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And you say, well, isn't that all the gospel? And, and no, I think the point here that he's trying to make is the fact that the, the greatest news that the world ever had is the fact that Jesus is. Yeah. <laughs> right? That in and of itself is wonderful, wonderful news. Gospel of Jesus Christ. We can, you know, continue on. Uh, and then we, come to the, then the, we come to Paul. So the Apostle Paul then adds one that sort of at, at first when we read it, there are some who might say, ooh, I don't know about that one. Take a look at Romans chapter 12 and verse 16. Notice what he said. In the day when God shall judge the secrets of men by Jesus Christ according to... Whoa. See, now for some, we would read that and we say, wait, wait, what? My gospel? My gospel? Who does Paul think he is? I thought it's always the gospel of Jesus Christ. Well, that's not what Paul said. And he made it into Scripture. In fact, he's got several places in Scripture. So there must be something to that. He, uh, he, he, and by the way, that's not the only time he said that. He said it many times. My gospel. My gospel. Doesn't that sound a lot like the song we just listened to for the offering? If I tell you... My story, my story, that's, that's where I'm headed with this. He, he said later in chapter 15, uh, chapter 10 and verse 15, he said, he talks about a gospel of peace. And, uh, and that's mentioned several times. And then in Philippians chapter 4, writing to the church at Philippi, he wrote this in uh, verse number 15. He said, now you Philippians know also that in the beginning of the gospel, that implies that this, there was a beginning of the gospel, that implies it's an ongoing process, Yes. It's an ongoing pro. Please know this: the gospel is not just about salvation. It's not that's the beginning. The day you accepted Jesus Christ as your Savior, that's the beginning of good news for you. Amen. I think some, so many times we're so focused on getting to heaven, we forget that Jesus really didn't come for us to go to heaven so much. He came to bring heaven here. Read the end of the book, folks. If you read the end of the book, we find that, that uh, if you live long enough, if we live long enough to be a part of the, uh, a, be a part of the, the rapture, we're only going to spend, I believe, about seven years in heaven. 
Because if you read the end of the book, you find heaven doesn't stay up there. Heaven comes here. So we're all coming back here. So heaven really, you know, the people are there now, or, you know, our loved ones are there now. But, uh, but, but you know, if we live long enough and we're a part of the, the, the rapture, we see Jesus return that way and take us to, to heaven. We're only going to be there a short period of time and then we're back here. So, and, and so the point there is that the, our salvation is just the beginning of the good news. The good news is not just that Jesus wants to take you to heaven, Dwayne. It's that he wants us to live for him. He wants us to have joy right now, right here, right now. The good news is he wants to help us in our lives right now, right here. So that's the real good news. So, so we have this. And then, and then the last one, just very, very quickly, Galatians chapter 3 and verse 8. This, is, this may seem a little puzzling, but notice what he said. In, in, again, same, same, uh, same church at Galatia. He said in the scripture, for seeing that God would justify the Gentiles by faith, preached the gospel to Abraham. Wait, what? Abraham? How did Abraham get the gospel? I'll tell you, because the word gospel means good news. And he said, Abraham, there's going to come a day when all the Gentiles will be brought into the family of God through your descendants. And we know that's through the person of Jesus Christ. Is everybody with me so far? So the word gospel means good news. And we go now back. So what does all this mean to us? So what really was Paul trying to tell this church at Galatia when he said, you're turned away unto another gospel and which is not another, not one of the same kind. Here's what he was trying to tell us. A couple of things we need to remember. Number one is simply this. There's a lot of good news. There, listen, this book is not... I don't know about you. I grew up, I grew up kind of feeling like this was not a real positive book. Did you grow up that way? Are you all awake? See, I grew up in a church that it seemed like it was more about what you can't do rather than what you can do. <laughs> rather, it, it seemed like it was all about everything you're doing wrong instead of what you're doing right. I mean, I, you know, I was part of a, of a cultish uh, system for a very long time. I knew, I knew, uh, I, I knew everything God was against. <laughs> I didn't know much that he was for. <laughs> Remember those days? <laughs> but it's actually filled with good news. There's lots of good news. The gospel means good news. And that's where Paul said, so let me tell you how it's good for me. That's what he meant when he said, my gospel. He said, I can tell you what it did for me. He said, I, I, he said my, it's my gospel. So the first thing is we need to learn there's lots of good news. And the second thing is we should all have a way we tell our story. We should all have a way that we tell our story. You have a gospel. I have a gospel. You say, oh, well, I just don't know if I have a gospel. You have a gospel. You have a good news. You have something that happened in your life that is good. So, so uh, now look, now, now, now please understand, I didn't say we all have our own truth. Are, are you with me? What is this? You all really are a weird crowd today. <laughs> you're, you're just odd. In general, I mean. no. <laughs> You're in, a, you're in an odd mood. I don't know if it's, I don't know if it's me or if it's you, but, uh, but look, the, you know, we should all have a way to tell our story. We all have a gospel to tell, and that's what he was trying to say. He was trying to say, listen, I'm not upset with you. I'm not upset with you for having your own way to tell the gospel story. He said, I'm, I'm concerned about you, you, uh, you being drawn away by something that's completely different. This would be my own truth. This would, be the, this would be the movement right now that's in, in our world saying, well, you can have your own truth, your own way to heaven. No, there's one way to heaven. But that's not the gospel. The, how to get to heaven is just a, it's a, honestly, how to get to heaven is one of the simplest things in Scripture. That's about as easy as it gets. The, the way we get to heaven is by realizing I can't do it, he can do it, and the only hope I have is if he does do it, and I'm going to ask him to do it. Right? And I'm going to trust him to do it. And I'm going to stop trying to do it myself. I'm going to, you know, now we live like we should, but I'm, going to, I'm not going to try to save myself. I can't save myself. That's how you get to heaven. That is about as simple as it gets, about as easy as it gets. Everything else, though, is, should still be good news, but it's personal. It's how that affected your life. Let me, let me, let me use some illustrations. Okay. Your, let, me, let me say it this way. Your gospel is to the gospel what this apple was to the other apple. What, what, what a uh, Granny Smith, 
That's a Granny Smith. How many of you ladies love to be called Granny? My grandmother would have whipped me. I mean, she would have whipped me if I'd ever called her Granny. That was one thing she said early on in my life. Don't ever call me Granny. And so we did. So <laughs> after we got the brownies, after. Your gospel is to the gospel what a Granny Smith is to this um, uh, Red Delicious. That's just how it is. Look, and, and, and it's a little bit different. You know, how, many, how many of you like a, a little harder, firmer, sour apple as opposed to one like this? Yeah. And, and, but they're both apples, right? And, and, and they're the same story. It's the same gospel. So, so you can put it that way. Your view of the gospel, here, here, just say it this way. Your view of the gospel is what is how Jesus, is how he found you, how he saved you, how he helped you, how he's changing you. What he brought you out of, where he's taking you, that's your gospel. The gospel isn't just how to get to heaven. It's about your life. What is he doing in your life? That's my gospel. I have a gospel. What Jesus has, where Jesus found me, how he helped me. You know, okay, so for some people, the gospel, all right, let's, let's talk about music for a minute. You know, for some, for some people, uh, we, we've been talking a bit about music here lately, haven't, haven't we? Uh, uh, what was your name? Yeah, yeah, Herman. Herman. By the way, Joanne, Joanna, he fell asleep in church last week, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, you weren't here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but you heard his version. I want to tell you my version. You heard the truth, but I want to tell you my version. I want to tell you the preaching version. So, so you know, for, for, talking about music, you know, for some people, the gospel is Amazing Grace sung a cappella, or to a guitar, or to a piano. That's, that's the gospel. That's, that's kind of that. That's, that's, that's your, for other people, it's, it's the newer, you know, amazing grace. Uh, uh, you know, my chains are gone, you know, sung by whoever that is. I don't, they all sound the same to me. Uh, all those artists, I mean, they're all good. I'm, I'm not criticizing them. I mean, they just all sound the same to me. Uh, and I don't remember their names, but, but you know, it, it could be that for other people for, okay. For, for Robert back here in, in the sound booth, he's a heavy metal uh, fan. And uh, you know, for him, it's, it's the same, it's the same story. It's the same truths, but it's expressed through some heavy metal type music like uh, uh, Judas Priest and some of those that he, that he likes. Now, that's not, that's, that's, look, it's, but it's still the same message, right? Yeah. It just appeals differently to different people. It has that different nuance. It has that different flavor. Everybody's got a gospel. Same story. This is not what we want. This is not what we're sharing with the world. But there's lots of different kinds of apples, aren't there? And there's lots of different gospels. Everybody's got a different gospel. Josh, you like, I think you like Christian rap music, don't you? Yeah. I keep trying to get him to come up and do something. He just won't. And, but look, it's, it's you know, and again, that's not, maybe not your, not, maybe not your taste. It's not what you like. But it's still the same gospel. The words are the same and so forth. You get the idea. That's, so that, I mean, that's how it relates to music. We get, we get related in so many different ways. For some, listen, for some, the, you know, the gospel is the testimony of how Jesus, how God sent his son. God came and he found you in the proverbial ditch somewhere, you know, in addiction somewhere, in, in bankruptcy somewhere, in a, in, a, in a terrible state, in a depression state somewhere, in a suicidal state somewhere. That's where Jesus found you. For others, Jesus came and he found you as a nine-year-old sitting around a dinner table in your three-bedroom, white picket fence house, holding hands with your family, getting ready to say an evening prayer before your evening dinner. Guess what? Same gospel. Yes, and by the way, that gospel means that's it, in both cases, that is a savior coming to find a sinner. <laughs> right? It's a savior saving a sinner. And, and that nine-year-old growing up in, in a proverb, spiritually speaking, with a silver spoon in their mouth, just as much a sinner as all the other sinners, right? Yeah. Still need, need of a Savior. Same gospel, but a totally different story, right? Yeah. So, so totally different story to tell. Totally different group to reach. Totally different testimony of God's grace. They're both, they both need just as much of God's grace. Ex saved exactly the same way. Same Savior. Same salvation process, but a totally different story, but the same story. Are you with me? So the question is, have we figured out what our story is? What's your story? What is, the, what is, your, what is your gospel? That's, that's what we're talking about here. You know, for some people in this room, it is uh, the, 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 your, your gospel, your story can be expressed in your ability to teach, your ability to share. I love what's happening at 9 o'clock every Sunday morning here. We've got people that are teaching, and you're teaching each other, aren't you? 
It's not just one teacher, is it, Laura? It's not just you. Everybody's teaching everybody, right? And, uh, and, and see, and it, it, some, for some people, it's their ability to teach. For others, it's their ability to sing. For others, it's the, it's their, for some, it's opening up a door. For some, it's running our elevator. For some, it's, it's being able to write a bigger check maybe than somebody else. That's still your gospel. That's your good news. That's your way of sharing this, this gospel. For Paul, it was preaching the gospel. So Paul said this, Paul, in fact, let me just take it to you. Let me just take you to the, to the, uh, and by the way, when I say for Paul, it was preaching the gospel. The word preaching in scripture just simply means to broadcast or to publish. So that's the same for everybody. Okay. I'm going to fall off if you don't say amen. (laughs) Oh, so you don't think you're supposed to publish the good news? You're not supposed to broadcast. No, we're all supposed to, right? We're all supposed to. Stephen and Victoria, they, they broadcast the good news when they get up here and lead our worship. You broadcast the love of Jesus Christ when you open that door for somebody. When you drive that bus. Who drove that bus today? Billy? Stop talking, Billy. I'm talking up here. He's, <laughs> they're still on their honeymoon. <laughs> no, yeah, I mean, you drove the bus today, right? See, that's what they did. They were, they were, taking, the, they were taking the good news out somewhere. They said, hey, let me, let me bring in, bring in some, some good news. It's what Josh and me should do, every, you know, the fourth Sunday of every month when they're down there with our kids. But everybody should have a story to tell. In fact, everybody has a story. Paul said, for me, it's preaching the gospel. Let me, let me just show it to you. Uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 9 and verse 14, the last uh, scriptures I'm going to take you to today. But, uh, but Paul wrote this. He said, even so has the Lord ordained that they which preach the gospel should live of the gospel. Now, I think that verse kind of speaks for itself. It's not really what I wanted to take you to, but I thought it was a pretty good verse, and I thought we ought to just go ahead and put it up there for a second. Right? We all agree with that, right? We're going to preach the gospel. We ought to live the gospel. Hey, nothing will turn somebody off faster than preaching the gospel and not living the gospel. Saying, hey, I've got some good news about Jesus Christ, and then you're a miserable human being. <laughs> Grumpy, grouchy. Hey, it's a sin to be a grouch. Thank you, Josh. It's a sin to be a grouch. Right? Hi, Dale. <laughs> and Dale just woke up. So, verse 16, though. This is where I wanted, wanted, wanted to see. So here's what Paul wrote. He's, he's writing to another church, and he, said, he, said, he just put it this way. He said, for though I preach the gospel, I have nothing to glory of, for necessity is laid upon me. In other words, he said, I don't have a choice. This is what I have to do. Yea, woe unto me if I preach not the gospel. He said, if I don't do what God has called me to do, I am miserable. Right? I got news for you. Some of the most miserable people that I know are people who are just flat out ignoring what God wants them to do. Just don't, nothing good. Not doing anything good. Not, not helping anybody. Not serving anybody. Not loving anybody. Not sharing anything. They just sit, sit at home. I'm not trying to be unkind. But there are way too many Christians who just sit at home by themselves well, it's me and Jesus. Actually, he's out with other people. He's seeing other people. Just so you know. Just so you know. Don't kid yourself. And, and by the way, he, 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 said, he said, I want you to love me. I want you to love God. I want you to love people too. And in fact... You love people. You love God mostly by loving people. That's a different message, but you know, we preach that all the time here. Here's the point. He said, "Look, woe unto me is if I preach the gospel." Now, watch verse 17. Here's here's where he here's where he draws a distinction. He says, "For if I do this thing willingly, in other words, if I share my story willingly, I have a what reward." reward. Now, listen. Just because he says I get a reward, that doesn't mean it's a bad motive. It's, look, it's a, why do you go to work? Does anybody in the room work? Anybody in the room go to work? Anybody? Anybody? No. Why do you go to work, Dale? Paid. Oh, because it's so rewarding. <laughs> because I just love to paint. What a load of paint. 
you go to get paid, right? You go to get a reward. <laughs> so there's nothing wrong with that. It's why we do what we do. So just because there's a reward doesn't mean you have a bad motive for doing it. He, so he said, if I do this thing willingly, if I share my story willingly, if I do what God is telling me to do willingly, I get a reward. But if I do it against my will, basically he's saying, I really don't have a choice. <laughs> I'm, I have, I'm, I'm he's, here's what he said. A dispensation of the gospel is committed unto me. Now that's some big words and some crazy, let me just translate that into everyday English today. He said, if I do it willingly, I get a reward. If I do it against, if I, if I do it grudgingly, if I do it grou in a grouchy way, if I do it with resentment, if I do it only because I have, he said, it's still committed unto me to do it. I'm still expected to do it. Any moms in the room? How much do your children love to clean their rooms? They love it? Nope. Melanie, do they love it? They don't? Do they do it anyway? Yeah. You know why? Because the rule stands whether you want to do it or not do it. And by the way, if you give your children chores to do and they choose not to do it, don't let them choose not to do it. So, but the point is, he said, look, there's still a, there is still a commitment. There is a stewardship given to me. You've been given a story by God and you are responsible to share that story. I've been given a story. I am responsible to share that story. That's what he said. You're responsible for it. It is the word dispensation. You know what the word dispensation means? I mean, we, we think about the word dispensation. It's actually a very strong biblical word. Um, but really, it just comes from the word dispense. You know, like a Pez dispenser. <laughs> I was thinking of some other words like dispensary, things like that. But I figured you could understand Pez dispenser, Harold. So, what is a Pez dispenser? Well, you just, it's, yeah, you just, you, that's what it means. He said, uh, he said, I, I'm responsible to, to give it out. I'm responsible to get it out of there. You don't put candy in a Pez dispenser and then put it in a drawer, right? right? You put it out there. So, but the word dispensation actually means this, and this is where I'm going to wrap up here with this. The word dispensation actually means God's plan for how to deal with mankind depending on the era in which we live. Right now, we live in what we call the church era, the church age, the age of grace, whatever you want to call it. That's how God wants to deal with us as individuals. He'd, just make it real practical. God is not asking any of us to build an ark, right? He's not asking you to build an ark. He's not asking you to sacrifice an animal. He's not asking me to do, uh, to do anything. He's not asking me to kill a giant. He's not asking me to, he's not asking me to walk on water. He's not asking me to write a book of the Bible. In fact, he prohibits that. And he's certainly not asking me to die on a cross. But what he is asking me to do is to take in this age in which I live. All right. So let me just, let's just make it ultra practical. What he's asking you to do in 2022 is use your social media to reach your generation in this time period. Yes. How do you do that? Good news. Here's the point. Good news. Good news. Good news. Not bad news. Not negative news. And it doesn't matter what form it takes. God is not interested in us sharing bad news. Is there anybody in the room who thinks that everything is wonderful in America right now? So you all already know that? Okay, so listen, so none of you need to tell anybody else in this room how bad things are. Right. Everybody already knows. Right. Oh, but I, I, I need to tweet this and Insta this and face this. No, you really don't. You really don't. How about this? Mind your own business. <laughs> There's an idea. Good news. That's what the word gospel means. You have a gospel. I have a gospel. Let's share that good news. If your news isn't good, look, so use your social media. Use your voice. Use your talents. Use your money. Use your business. Use your, use your influence. Use your, your personality. Whatever it is that God has allowed you to have in your life, that is what we're supposed to use to share good news with the world around us. The Bible says, be not overcome of evil, but overcome evil with good Good. So let's share some good news. You know, the, if your news isn't good news, 
it's a different kind of gospel. If your news isn't good news, it's a different, it's not really a gospel. It's something completely different. And you can't make an apple pie out of this. And it turns people off. Like it was turning off the people in Galatia because they were doing a different gospel than the one that, that Paul had originally told. So let's don't turn the lost away. Let's don't turn the world away. Let's don't turn those that are seeking, trying to figure out some truth away by constantly sharing everything negative. Instead, remember, you have a gospel. There is a gospel of Jesus Christ. There's a gospel of peace. There's all those gospels. They all mean good news. So what is your good news? That's what I want to ask you this morning. I am going to, we're just going to play, replay that song that we played earlier. This is my story. And I just want you to, during this invitation time, it's not going to be a traditional invitation. I would love for you to, you're welcome to come and use this altar. And I hope you do. And I hope that we'll come and we'll say, God, would you teach me something in my life? Show me something in my life where I'm, I'm not showing this gospel to the world around me. But I, won't, I just want us to stop and think, what is my story? Where is my good news? Tell that part. Tell that part.